Lord, thank you for this time that we get to spend considering your blood, Jesus, considering your body that was given as we take the Lord's Supper, as we get to think about these things, that we get to spend time in your word. I pray, Jesus, that you be magnified and glorified as we do this. And Jesus, it is always in your great name we pray. Amen. Please sit down. As we are going to spend time in God's word, we want to make sure that everybody has a copy of God's word in their hands. So if you don't currently have a copy, go ahead and raise your hand and one of these men will make sure that you can have a copy in. And if you don't own a copy, this is also a gift for you uh, that you can go ahead and take home. Once you have your Bible, please go ahead and open to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. We'll be in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. This is the time in our service when we take the Lord's Supper. It's a time when we remember that Christ's body was given and his blood was shed. And we do this to proclaim his death until he returns, until he comes. But this this is a family time. This is only for believers. It's only for those that have repented and turned from their sins and turned to Christ. It's for those that would call themselves followers of Christ. If you would, by your own omission, say that you're not a follower, that you have not repented and turned from your sins, then we ask that when the tray comes by, that you would simply just let it pass. But please don't leave today without talking to somebody about this, whether it's the person who brought you, me, any of the other pastors. We would love to talk to you and discuss the good news of Jesus. Believers, By the time we get to the end of chapter 6, Paul has already been admonishing the Corinthians for several chapters. In these chapters, Paul has been employing a rhetorical device to remind them of things that they already know or should know. Just in chapter 6, Paul repeatedly asked the Corinthians the question, do you not know? In verse 2, do you not know that the saints will judge the world? In verse 3, do you not know that we will judge angels? Verse 9, or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Verse 15, do you not know? Verse 16, or do you not know? And then in our passage, verse 19 starts off that way. He's addressing things that they should already know. In our verses 19 and 20, sit in the context of Paul exhorting the Corinthians about sexual immorality. He's reminding them of truths that they should know so that they would be able to, as verse 18 says, to flee immorality. Please follow along as I read 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you have been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. In these two verses, Paul wants the Corinthian believers to be reminded of two current realities that they already know and employ those, employ that knowledge to flee sin, specifically sexual immorality. Look at the beginning of verse 19. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? who you have from God. This temple or sanctuary is simply a term used to describe a place where a deity dwells. And here in verse 19, God is telling us that the person, that God in the person, the Holy Spirit has set up residence and currently dwells in our body. This, your body is a temple. Your, the Holy Spirit who is in you. These are These verbs are present tense. This is a current reality. We are literally and objectively indwelled by the Holy Spirit. And applying this knowledge should help us to flee immorality. The second current reality that Paul wants us to remember is at the end of verse 19. Or do you not know that you are not your own? You and I do not possess ownership of ourselves. Again, 
The verb here, are, is a present tense verb. This is a current reality. You and I are owned by another. You and I are owned by God. You are not simply free to do whatever you want with your body because it's somebody else's property. It's God's property. Why are you not your own? Where did this idea of ownership come from? Let's look at verse 20. For you have been bought with a price. Here, this word for bought means that a financial transaction took place to purchase a person. This imagery, this is imagery of a slave owner purchasing a slave out of the slave market. And you, believer, are the slave that was purchased. You were a slave to sin. And you have been purchased by God, for God, to be a slave of God. This event took place in the past, but it has effects that continue into the present. You are purchased in the past and you are still owned by God. How were you bought? Verse 20 says it was with a price. And this price, this is a price that only Jesus, the Son of God, could pay. And what was that price? It's what we are here this morning celebrating. It was his body that was given and his blood that was shed at the cross. This precious blood of Jesus was the currency that purchased you. Every one of your sins have incurred an infinite debt that you were unable to pay yourself. There is nothing that you could have done and you rightly deserve condemnation and judgment and hell for your sins. And it's all God's grace, all God's grace. And praise God that he alone could pay that debt and did pay that debt for all believers. And because of that, you get to glorify him now as his slave. And when you die, you get to enjoy him forever. Believer, As we're celebrating communion, we need to specifically consider the debt that was owed by us and the price that was paid at the cross. When your hearts are prepared, please go ahead and take communion on your own.